listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. This week on the Catholic Sprouts podcast, we are talking about Jesus Christ, the King of the universe, in this final week of the year before we start a new church calendar on Sunday. So before we return to that, please join me in praying Psalm 136 as we grow in gratitude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. O give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now we mentioned yesterday that this feast day, Jesus Christ, King of the universe, that we were given this feast day back in the 1920s, that the Pope gave it to us as the world sort of went through a difficult change. And I feel like this is still happening today. Many governments became atheist governments. They denied the existence of God and began to persecute in particular the Catholic Church. This happened in various places, but it happened in a really devastating way in Mexico. In fact, we have many priests and even lay people that lost their lives in the 1920s and 30s in Mexico. Now, we're going to tell this story today through the life of Blessed Miguel Pro, who was a priest, and pay close attention to the words that he said at the end of his life. So Blessed Miguel Pro was born in Mexico City. He was a jokester as a little boy. He liked to play practical jokes, especially on his sisters. And in his class as a boy, he was known for doing imitations of his teachers. Beyond this, he had a very deep spiritual life. And as a young man, he discerned a call to the priesthood. He decided to leave Mexico and attend a seminary in Europe. Unfortunately, while he was gone studying for the priesthood, big changes came to Mexico. There was a civil war, and the group that won took over, and they were atheists, meaning they denied the existence of God. This entire government denied God. And so they began to systematically persecute the church in Mexico. They arrested priests. They shut down churches, and they made it illegal to go to Mass. So at first, the people of Mexico took to peaceful protesting. 95% of the people in Mexico were Catholic. They wanted to, to celebrate the faith. And so they, they peacefully protested, but the government simply cracked down harder. And so small bands of armies began to fight for their right to practice the faith. So this is all happening. Blessed Miguel Pro is in Europe and people tell him, don't go back. It's way too dangerous, especially now that you have been ordained a priest. But Blessed Miguel Pro refused to stay away. He knew that now more than ever, the people of Mexico needed a priest to offer them the sacraments. So he returned to Mexico. In fact, he snuck in. And for the next several years, he served the people of Mexico as a priest in hiding. He did all sorts of clever things to avoid getting arrested. He would wear different disguises to sneak past the police. Sometimes he would dress as a beggar or a car mechanic. And one time he even disguised himself as a police officer while he was trying to get away from the police. He would say mass in people's homes. He would baptize babies by rivers or streams. And he would even hear confession while sitting on a public bench and pretending to read the newspaper. He did all of these things because he knew how powerful the sacraments were. As time went on and the persecution of priests in Mexico became worse and worse, Blessed Miguel Pro offered his life to Jesus. One day he was saying mass for a congregation of sisters who were also in hiding. 
and he prayerfully offered his life to Jesus if it could at all help save the church in Mexico. Shortly after this, Father Miguel Pro and his brother were arrested on false charges. The officers discovered that he was a priest and he was sentenced to death with a firing squad without a trial. They offered him a blindfold so he wouldn't have to watch as he was being executed, but he refused. Instead, he stood up. He raised his arms in the shape of a cross and his final words were, Viva la Cristo Rey. Now that means long live Christ the King. So why do we tell this story as we are talking about Jesus Christ, King of the Universe? Well, Blessed Miguel Pro knew that even though the government was corrupt, even though all of these terrible things were happening in Mexico, it did not change the fact that Jesus Christ is and always will be the true King of the Universe. He was willing to die proclaiming that. And so, Sprouts, my challenge for you today is to shout the same words that Basa Miguel Pro did, to shout, Viva la Cristo Rey, and to continue to believe, just as he did, that no matter what is happening in the world, in our government, that Jesus Christ remains the true King of the universe. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow, but until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. We are happy to announce that the Clubhouse, the membership from Catholic Sprouts, will be enrolling new members soon. We're having so much fun with our founding members. We've had several conversations with incredible religious communities, and they've answered all of our questions. I'm Mother Mary Matthew. I'm Mother Marie Elizabeth. I'm Sister John Marie. I'm a junior sister. Great. What's your question, guys? What is life like because you don't leave the convent? What do you have for breakfast? (laughs) (laughs) Good question. How old do you have to be to do to to be a nun? Do you always have to be veiled? I think they asked, do you always have to wear your veil? Oh, (laughs) yes, we do. Do you ever celebrate your birthdays there? Wonderful, wonderful. Guys, these were really wonderful questions. Thank you, sisters. Thank you so much. If you are interested in making some great Catholic friends, exploring your vocation, having fun, learning to pray, and just growing in your Catholic identity, we encourage you to discern joining us. Doors will be open again the first Sunday in Advent. So think about it, pray about it, and we hope that you climb on up and have a great time with us inside of the Catholic Sprouts Clubhouse. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.